All right, hello everyone, how's it going? This is gonna be a weekly recap over the last week of 2021 and a brief overview of the year. And unfortunately, I already made this video, but it turned out that it was not getting any audio whatsoever. So I'm gonna have to redo this again, but that's totally fine. Uh, just to summarize, this is my entire trading journey right here in just one chart. And I am so happy that even though um, I am overall down $18 from when I first started back in 2015, I am only $18 from getting back to break even from 2015, 2016 when I was like 19, 20 and I first started trying to day trade. It was much harder back then because you had to um, pay for commissions and um, that's what really got me out of the trading i just couldn't see past the red trades i would constantly have even if they are slightly profitable or just break even trades i'd have to pay for commissions and that really did not um you know help me that really messed with me and um it wasn't until around february 2020 that i started all over again and it took a very long time from you know being back in the market studying and then casually trading missing setups a lot just barely trading to now from 2021 right to 2022 um, a pretty significant change i ch um, started the um, trading challenge i joined a trading challenge in april 1st and um, it's been working ever since i've been um, studying a lot i've been practicing a lot i've been trading a lot and the only thing i do regret is just not going larger trading with more money um, I felt like if I were to have done that, I would have been a lot more profitable and maybe, you know, would have broken past this psychological barrier of being break even. But I think that is totally fine. And to go over my stats just overall, uh, I guess we'll have to do a custom range from right the first day of 2021 to the very last day. I am overall, I think, yeah, very close to. $1,300 up on the year and um, yeah ideally there's three things I want to do for 2022 I want to size up I want to trade more size I want my average um, winning trade to be much bigger than my average losing trade as you can see my average winning trade here is 12 and my average losing trade is 11 and what helps is that I have a good um, winning percentage and generally I tend to trade larger positions on my winning trades but I want to again I just trade larger and make my average winning trade bigger than my you know average losing trade but I also want to have better percent gains I feel like that has been if not um, you know sizing up this is like the one I really want to work on I want to get a lot more winning trades above 3% above 5% above 10% and there are multiple um, strategies, multiple setups that can allow stuff like that to happen. I also had an issue where I would be in and out of a trade that worked out a little too quickly so I wouldn't be that profitable. And what has helped me a lot is um, now selling in uh, pieces and also having VWAP as a guideline to um, base my trading in terms of where I might want to exit depending on how it's in correlation with VWAP um, there's definitely a lot of things I need to keep getting better at but again for 2022 God willing I want to be able to trade larger I want to be able to have again a much higher winning trade than a losing trade and I also want to see a lot more um, percent gains over 5% for sure that's really what I want to work on and I'll go over my um, year very briefly it kind of glitched now it says 2022 because it just calculates um, as you can see based off of uh, the current year so as you can see part of January and this is again supposed to be 2021 very um, very big hesitations missing a lot of setups just being too scared to get in trading and then I this is when I was trading um, listed stocks but then I started to transition into uh, trading OTC stocks because I realized that the OTCs are running crazy and the issue was is that um, I did not want to trade OTCs because I was too cheap I didn't want to pay commissions so what happened ultimately was that um, I started to 
you know just put in more effort and switch from listed stocks to OTCs and I was able to catch as you can see um, here in February and part of March part of the craziness that happened with um, the OTC markets I did have some nice big percent um, winning not big percent um, but like big dollar gain trades but very very risky I mean that was a market when anybody could have made money honestly and in my case I was um, doing a few things that I would just cringe to think about um, one I would trade large size maybe fifteen hundred and two thousand dollar positions is very large um, you know size trades number two I did not have VWAP Number three, I had barely any idea in terms of you know dollar risk level, how much I want to risk if the setup doesn't want doesn't work out. Ultimately, it was very scary, and I had to trade large size because you know commissions were a thing um, on TD and media trade. Very scary trading. I was able to make money there. I'm glad I didn't do anything too dumb. And then after that, it was just me trying to get better. As you can see here in March, I had, I remember this days, they sucked. Um, I wanted to have not just more green days and red days, but I wanted my green days to be much bigger than my red days. And I didn't like how here in March, my biggest red day was not, you know, um, small compared to my biggest green day. And I was trying to find more consistency. You know, the market with the OTCs were starting to fade and no longer be that good. Although I kind of woke up around July and this one was really nice too but again I wasn't trading with a dollar risk level I was just basically like oh okay yeah you know this one's really nice I'll trade larger this one's not so nice I'll trade less I might try that system again but um, I want to be a little more consistent in terms of how much size I should trade because I don't want it to be like um, a thing where maybe where I put in a lot of money in a certain setup because it really worked in my opinion is gonna work doesn't work and then I lose a whole bunch of money compared to another trade that did work but I didn't you know size in that much so that's something I'm gonna have to think about and then I was having a little um, you know more experience in trading but um, ultimately October was a uh, just a month when I had a really you know focus and there are months like these and I think it happens with um, every single day trader out there is that um, you go through something like this as you can see I traded almost every single day of October and ultimately with everything put together um, all of the trading here all of these numbers all of these trades and I only end up just profitable three bucks but you can't let those kind of months throw you off because you have to think of the big picture even though it doesn't show here um, in the three dollars and sixteen cents it's really a lot of learning a lot of experience that would only help you I think you know get better in the future and then I just start to trade better in that you know my biggest red day wasn't you know as bigger than my biggest green day and more green days than red days and then more often than not more um, you know the green days are much bigger than my red days and I thought that was pretty cool too um, this was December it looks like I did have a few more red days but this was a bit of a iffy month because I switched from trading OTCs on Schwab to Fidelity and there was like a gap a week and a half that I wasn't able to trade because I was switching brokers so I traded listed stocks which I'm not as good at and that was um, the case here with December um, a lot of things again that I need to get better with I want to scale up uh, trade larger position sizes I want my average winning trade to be bigger than my average losing trade and I want my percent gains to be much bigger uh, much larger I want to see more you know uh, trades that are more than five percent more than ten percent I don't want to be having this little baby percent gain so yeah um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get some water and I'm gonna go ahead and review all the trades for this very last week I ended up up 19 bucks um, I'll be back in a moment all right it is now gonna be the weekly recap and my voice is not gonna get any better from here so I might as well start now I had a total of nine trades and out of those nine trades only one trade this one right here was a red trade um, and this is when I started doing the new thing where I calculate my uh, position size according to that uh, video I made probably last week 
and I think it helps because it looks like 66% of all of the trades I did were according to my dollar risk level which varies from $15 to $8 to $5 and um, that was the case there I do like how my average dollar gain was much larger than my average um, dollar loss but of course I only had one red trade my average percent gain was also a lot better three times in theory as much as the average percent loss I had here my average um, this is more important for this case right here um, with only one red day is that um, or one trade I had a you know a much larger position size on my green trades and you know average to hell compared to my red trade which is very good it, it would be something and maybe all of these were nice little baby green uh, trades and then the one that was a red trade was like a big red you know amount lost and you know with a much larger position size I've had that happen before this is not the case um, I'd like to think I got better in that sense and yeah I like seeing that I think that's the most important one this doesn't really matter that much this kind of varies sometimes you just cut losses quickly immediately maybe it's a setup that plays out longer and you cut losses um, eventually then I ended up 19 bucks on the week that is only trading $1,300 of volume which is something I want to continue to keep getting better at is to have like a higher percent number in terms of how much I made according to how much I traded I want to see it um, get something to the 3% range um, if not higher and that's something I know that is possible it's just going to take time and I have to be uh, you know better getting more experience um, it's something that I really want to get good at in terms of the, the setups work I think this is one of the higher scores I've had only one trade here which was a red trade um, was one where the setup didn't ultimately work that was a pretty high score and then in terms of how I traded which is right here and it's not too bad uh, let's go ahead and, and just simply start and go over the trades um, a lot of different trades but only one of them this one the last trade was a listed stock the others are OTC's let's look at ILUS for the 27th and this is a VWAP breakout setup so let's look at ILUS right about here not a really significant red day but um, I do like how it was having more volume the previous few days and maybe it could have tried to reverse you know on this day right here after having this downtrend but it didn't do it it just you know decided to hold itself there it's not necessarily reversing but it could try to do something but not the day when I traded this 27th is right here my entry was at 9.46 a.m. and I bought at 32-ish, 9.47, was it 9.47 or 9.46? 9.46 at 32. So why did I get in this trade? Why was I in right here? Even though this was a bit messy and ugly looking, again with the thing with the daily chart and also the level 2, the price action. I've seen this happen a few times before that it breaks VWAP and then it uptrends throughout the rest of the day this is one example where it did break out of VWAP but it didn't necessarily continue the uptrend it got just a little higher and as you can see it faded but that's totally fine that was my attempt there at 946 and then I got out everything by 950 with the average as you can see super close to my entry 32 112 and 32 180 950 is when I was out which was right here in this candle and I was kind of dumb um, it broke past VWAP and I thought that we were trading at a higher range so basically I was in right here at 32 which was the ask right here and then when it kind of broke out 32 now became the bid not the ask and what I started to do was sell in pieces little by little which is what I've been doing but I didn't realize that I was selling at the same price I basically bought so that was kind of dumb and only I think 100 shares out of the 500 shares I believe I traded here yeah was like at the highs the rest of it was just me selling it basically in my entry so that was pretty dumb but the pattern was still there and it ultimately didn't you know um, uptrend even more it did again downtrend but that wasn't such a bad setup you know besides this candle and these two right here there was a lot of time to sell this thing for a slight profit but again the range isn't that good and it didn't uptrend again um, the rest of the day it just started to fade from there 
but that was a good attempt I just need to be focused on what my entry price was and remember that if I bought the ask it's gonna become the bid but if it doesn't uptrend from there I'm, I'm, any sales at the bid is just gonna be right where I was at so that's something to take into consideration the next trade is AABB panic dip buy so not like something like this which is what I call morning panic bounce play this is just a panic dip buy why is this a number five because this is like the number five of the penny stocking framework let's go ahead and look at AABB for the 27th Twenty seventh is right about here. I like this a lot. A very big, significant red day. Um, nice uptrend from the seventeens to thirty two, and then we had this big panic day. Very nice for some kind of a panic dip by type of setup on the twenty seventh. Let's look at the twenty seventh, which is way back here. All right, my entry was at. 10.33 a.m. and that was at 2.97 so 10.33 2.97 was right here in this candle 2.97 so why was I in this setup I really liked how we were having this big panic very scary look at the volume very nice volume and then it had like a max sell all the way right here at 29 just complete crying just absolute massacre right and then it has this uptrend a very ugly uptrend but I like how it went from here to all the way up here and I wasn't going to chase it on the way up or try trading the bottom thinking it's going to hold when it might keep going as it did plenty of times before but how it made that bottom it made an uptrend and then it came back near the bottom not exactly close to the bottom but like you know near the bottom and then it held a certain level that's why I was in at that price at uh, 297 1033 there was one more candle right a little scary but in theory my risk level was this wick breaking which I didn't do and I wasn't chasing it up here I waited it for it to come back and see if it could try to hold itself together and uptrend it didn't make a move as high as 36 which isn't that much range I mean 29 in theory to 30 that is what um that's like three and a half percent so this was it my sell was 1036 at 30 so let's look at 1036 right here at 30 this was my sell this was my entry the only thing I could have done better was um, and something I've learned you know recently and something that I want to keep getting better at I don't know if I oh, there we go found out how to use it maybe how to use it okay let's see if I can figure this out so Something I started to implement and I think is gonna be super nice is that um, when it comes to stocks like that that start doing some kind of an uptrend, a lot of them follow a trend line. And as you can see, if I do a trend line from the wick here to the next candle right here, it followed it so nicely. And then you can see when it broke the trend line here is when it started the downtrend. So in theory, that can help me you know be a little more profitable let's just say worst case scenario I held the trend line breaks the trend line and I get a sell at the worst at 30 that's still just a little bit higher than my entry I mean my exits and then I would have been able to have maybe sold partial positions uh, at much better prices you know maybe not everything at the bottom because that's not how I do things I like selling in pieces that would have helped me be that much more profitable and even though in this case, I mean, the range isn't that amazing. That's something I can try to do to get better. That was a pretty cool attempt there, a nice trade. And I think a good step in the right direction. I definitely could have sold better. Let's just say maybe a sell at uh, 304. That would have been a nicer percent gain. Again, not the best range, but it is something I can trade with a lot more size, a lot more money and really really just make money off of a setup that I've seen multiple times let's look at this one right here which is the next day it seems like with AABB another panic dip buy so let's look at AABB for the 28th which is this red day another nice red day to do some kind of a setup like that let's zoom out to the 28th which is right here let's highlight the entire day and I was in at 10:40 a.m. 
at 18 so 1040 let's probably zoom in a bit closer 1040 at um, right here 18 so why did I get in it looks like it was gonna turn around some kind of level 2 reversal I like how it broke 18 and went to the 17s but they came all the way back so that's why I was in it at 1040 and this was a case where I've learned um, or if anything remembered when the stock like AABB with this amount of volume is having like a big tsunami panic um, you have to place your orders ahead of time or be extra quick because of the fact that it might take a while for your order to get executed and what happened was is that um, it still ended up profitable but you can see I sold or at least got everything out by the time it was 1043 and if you see 1043 it was this um, panic you know big red candle right here I still ended up selling higher than my entry price but not by a lot and what happened was is that I was in at 1040 you know um, it was uptrending but then I started to not like the price action I started selling in pieces and I was able to get 400 of the 500 shares sold above 18 but the, unfortunately the last 100 shares I had to sell at I believe 17.3 or 17.2 because of the fact that um, you know it just went through this big panic it broke the wick which would have been my risk level and I learned from this trade here to um, be a little quick or maybe extra conservative on tsunami type panic stocks because of the fact that you know it might um, take a while for your order to get filled and that was a case there and that was a good lesson and I still ended up profitable let's look at the second trade I had with ABB on the same day that was an entry at 10.53 15.15 and that was right here which ended up being the ultimate bottom I wanted to see if I can zoom this in a little more I guess it helps a little but um, this ended up being the very bottom and the only issue is that I saw the next minutes um, from 15.15 to 15 and a half not a bad percent gain but you know I could have sold much better it was just so scary and I saw there at 1054 right here I could have drew another trend line here and then I would have probably sold at the 15 maybe the high 15s and done a little better and then um, maybe have considered the higher low although that would have been kind of scary but why was I in it right here at 1515 at 1053 when I could have been in on the 14s well First of all, this is hindsight 2020. You don't know if it's going to bottom at 14, but what I did like about it and what did get me in the trade is that it held 14 once, twice, three times, and then four times it held 14 with a lot of volume. So there were constantly a lot of bidders at 14, but it just seemed a bit too risky for me to maybe be in at like 14.3 and then, you know, it breaks 14 and then I'm out at 13.5 or maybe 12 because there's a lot of panic selling. So. I liked how it held 14 for all of these minutes and then it wasn't just that but I like how it not just held 14 but as you can see in these two candles it was struggling to get above 15 but in this candle when I got in at 15 15 it ultimately broke out of 15 so it not just held 14 for four minutes here but it also broke 15 and that's why I got in and even though that meant you know I didn't get in at the best price I felt like it was a less risky um, you know trade compared to an entry right here and I think that was pretty good I just could have done better with my sell and I could also just also be more comfortable at the fact that a lot of these when you have a big tsunami panic they have a very cool 11 a.m. reversal and this is an example where I actually did it right at 11 a.m. and it did reverse from this 15 level it got to um, 18 and then it even got to 20 and I probably would have you know so that v wap or maybe considered um the breakout i like how you know just a big red day right and then it breaks past v wap here and then it kind of comes back to v wap but it holds it that's a nice move from 18 to 20 that's something i can do right here maybe not um too ideal for me to hold something for so long for the 11 a.m reversal but i do like how this one actually got to v wap because some of these don't and it also went above that so uh, that was a pretty cool day here a lot of learning and I'm overall happy with the Learning that I have from those two trades. I could have traded better sure But I think that was a step in the right direction and more reason why I should consider trading also a larger size $75 position I can trade a lot larger because I feel like now at least with the new year um, I just 
I've just had that many trades, you know? Um, and that's really a blessing from God because I don't have to be in this position where I can be able to participate every single day at the market open. I was able to, you know, set up a business that I could um, be independent from and, you know, then have my own time schedule and everything. But um, I need to really capitalize on what God has given me and keep putting in more efforts. Um, definitely a lot of things I need to work towards. But that was a trade there with AABB. And let's look at HMBL, the 29th. And this was a proper morning panic bounce play. I traded, um, in theory, a $15 um, risk level was my goal, but I ended up trading a little larger. That's why I was off. But um, let's look at HMBL for the 29th. And my voice actually is not that bad. I thought it was going to be worse than this. <laughs> this is um, not a very good daily chart right here at the 29th the only thing in favor is that of course at the time you know you didn't know this was going to be a larger volume day but the day before was nice big volume so maybe some kind of reversal after all the big volume selling and panicking my buy uh my trade was here let's go ahead and um zoom in a bit closer but let's see my entry was 937 at 297 okay 937 we'll zoom in a bit more right here was my entry 297 937 Y morning penny bounce play in theory drops from 31 and a half to 29 not the best range but it just looked clean not the best um, daily chart so I traded it super conservatively and again I was in at 297 and um, it just looks like a level two reversal you know it got to this level made a wick it was able to hold 29 I got in at 297 ideally it gets to VWAP at 30 and a half and um, this one didn't get to VWAP I did sell in pieces and I was out the next minute 938 um, I think the reason why I got out was because there was a big um, seller that showed up at 30 and on top of that it doesn't have the best daily chart so I played it extra conservatively and that was my exit there um, overall at 30, 9.38. So right here, basically out at 30 with my entry at 2.97. That was a trade there. Not the best daily chart, but you know, I knew the I knew the setup was what it was, and not to go for some kind of home run. That was a pretty cool trade there, and uh, a bit of a larger position size. Let's look at the 29th for AABB. This was a regular panic dip buy and at this point I think I started to consider trading regular panic dip buys with the same $15 risk level as I do with morning panic bounce plays especially when they're very volatile like AABB was uh, let's look at AABB for the 29th 29th is right about here actually this is the 30th and 29th is right here the third red day so you can see it's trying to hold I was actually thinking of some kind of like of a reversal setup, uh, like maybe you can try to hold this level and uptrend, but I'm not really good with those, and this one didn't even offer that much of an opportunity, but in theory, that's something I want to keep getting better at. I want to expand, you know, my trading strategies to um, more things, but that was, you know, right here, the idea on the 29th that this thing could try to reverse. I almost had a trade there, but I didn't. This was just though a regular panic dip buy. I was in at 10.01, 15.03. So let's probably zoom in a bit closer. 10.01, 15.03. I had a killer entry right here, but the only problem here is that I barely held on to the thing because it was that freaking scary. But um, I did get a super nice entry. And why did I get in this one? Because I saw so many bidders at 15 that I felt like with that many bidders at 15, if it's not going to hold 15, at least it's going to give me a lot of time to get out if it breaks 15 because there's so many bidders, um, you know, just sitting there at 15. So maybe I could get an entry. If it doesn't work out when it starts going back to 15 and it's trying to break 15, I can get out before it actually does for a very low risk um, trade for something that has a lot of potential towards the upside and that was my entry there for that reason at 1503 and I should have probably have kept to that mindset but I was too scared I got out um, 1003 
Oh, so I was in at 1001. Did I do that wrong? 1001, right here. 1001, 1503, and I got out at 1003, and that was at 1519. 1003, 1519 was my average. Right here, it did eventually start to turn around and make a move towards the upside. Super freaking scary. Even if I were to have drawn a trend line here, I don't think it would have held it very nicely. Just a scary thing, but it did offer a move towards the upside. I could have just sold maybe most of my position and just kept 100 shares uh, for that. If that were to then go back to 15, I would sell those 100 shares. But if it were to uptrend like it did here, I would be able to um, partake in this uptrend and then maybe sell at a nicer price or maybe here when it started to consolidate and you know maybe you should just get out right then and there maybe it'll continue to put up higher lows in uptrend but um, at least you had a section sold near the highs if that's the ultimate top um, I did see this bounce I was interested in trading this I thought it was going to maybe uptrend and then downtrend a little and I was going to be in at that point but no nope, this one just shot up which was cool from 15 to 16 7 this was the 29th if you watched the video that I published on the 29th you can see me go over my thoughts um, with this in detail but that was a trade there with AABB not really that bad I just could have held some more shares um, despite how scary it was there was a lot of bidders at 15 and I could have waited for that to have happened if it was going to happen which it didn't happen but um, I could you know do that thing and then I can be able to sell more shares at a higher price Let's look at AXXA. This one's a bit of a long one. Intraday, multi day breakout, hold long. Let's look at AXXA. The only red trade I had this whole week um, at the 30th. So let's take a look at that. Very jumpy stock, but in theory, what I really liked with this one is that, as you can see, there's a high here at 86, 86.5, give or take right there and I liked how this thing it looks like it was gonna not just break um, at that point let's go to the 30th right here this move right here I really liked how at the time it was breaking the day high but it was also breaking this uh, multi-day high the only issue with this stock is that it's a low float I believe LTC super jumpy with a wide spread but that was in theory what I was interested in and this one did fail ultimately a downtrend but I was in at 1027 at 9 so let's take a look at that 1027 was right here at 9 so I hit the ask right about here and what got me out of this trade um, first of all you can see my dollar um, risk was two bucks well why if it should be in this case it was gonna be five I was in only a half position um, in theory this thing was uptrending right kind of broke the day high downtrended and it was doing this and I thought maybe it's just consolidating here and what's going to happen is that it's going to keep uptrending and then I'm going to miss the setup because I want to buy it ideally um, here at VWAP which would be higher than here when it was last at VWAP um, but what if it just uptrends and then I miss it completely because I wanted to buy at VWAP so I thought let me be in half my position here if it drops and holds VWAP I'll be interested and then I'll be full size for something towards the upside but um, again that's why I had half a position I didn't like how volume just dried up as you can see here it just dried up and then you can see the volume came back because of the panic selling and then broke under VWAP and it looked nasty but what happened was is that um, it started trading at a lower range um, it started to downtrend and then there were like big sellers at the ask appearing and then people dumping their shares at the bid for a moment I was trying to sell back my shares for break even or a slight profit but I ultimately canceled that order and I was out 1031 at 895 right here right before it blew up right right here at 10 um, 31 895 basically 89 was at the bid and um, 9 was at the ask I threw my order at the bid and actually ended up filling in the middle which was nice and I got out and it did downtrend it did fail ultimately but I think that was a good attempt you know for something that I'm not that good at which is uptrending stock setups at least I find myself a lot better you know with dip buys um, warning panic balance play stuff like that with OTC's this was a bit 
you know, of a setup that I'm not um, that experienced with compared to those other ones of trending stocks. Um, but that was a good attempt. That was a trade there. And let's look at the next trade, which is also AXXA, but it was the next day for a regular morning panic bounce play. So let's look at AXXA for the 31st, which was the next day right here. Not a significant red day for a morning panic bounce play, but it probably had a nice drop at the open right about here we'll probably zoom in a bit more very 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 ch um, choppy looking thing but I was in at 9.34 at 7.3 right here 7.3 9.34 why was I in it dropped from 81 all the way to 71 started to turn around um, the bid and the ask was starting to look in favor. People were hitting the ask, and I hit the ask two at 73. And then, um, you know, this thing was just so sketchy that it trades with such a wide range that normally I would be at a $15 risk level. So, in theory, I should have been 7,000 shares at least with the way I calculate uh, my dollar risk level and everything. But I went even smaller than that, I went one more. Um, half size of what I would normally trade just because it trades with such a wide range that it's kind of scary I'm very happy with my position size you know given the average dollar risk level that I'm trading I'm pretty happy with that and I was out 936 right here this was my sell at 755 so what happened was is that um, you know it hit this bottom maybe a slight uptrend I hit 73 7.3 then, which was the ask, it was taken out. 7.3 became the bid, and then there was a widespread. 78 was at the ask, right? So what I thought with this price action is that this might be kind of sketchy. You know, maybe volume is going to dry up and then trade really badly. Let me go ahead and sell at the, um, my entry, which is the bid 7.3, but in theory, I'm probably going to get something in the middle that's probably like a hidden buyer somewhere in the middle. And I'll get executed there. And that's what happened. I put my sell order. I got executed right in the middle at 755. And I was pretty happy with that. Um, it never broke my risk level at you know, 714 throughout the entire um, morning until I guess right before midday is when it finally broke it. But there was a lot of opportunity to not sell at a loss. I'm very happy with my sell there right in the middle. That's how I should have traded it given how scary low volume and how much of a range it trades um, probably again a low flow OTC very happy with that trade um, nothing I could have really done better with that um, you know according to my dollar risk level and everything this was a really good trade and now let's go over my last trade which was a listed stock that I traded okay so there was room for improvement uh, let's look at NTRB for the 31st As you can see, very nice big green day, nice gap up. Look at the nice volume, huge difference, very impressive listed stock runner. And I liked how this one was uptrending, even from pre market. You know, just a nice move towards the upside. Any newbie could have been profitable with this, um, especially me in this case, um, having less experience on listed stocks compared to OTCs. And not just that, on um, a listed stock, but an uptrending. Um, you know setup so my entry was at 10 11 904 and why was I trading this right here was my entry at 10 11 I guess I'll zoom in a little more right about here and right about here was my entry at 904 so why did I get in very simple high a day breakout of trending throughout the entire day pre-market the last day of the year lacks um, max euphoria, max craziness, people putting in all their money because this thing's going to run like crazy. I called it that there was going to probably be a listed stock and an OTC stock. It's going to be like up 300% on the day and I was watching for those and I was watching this one being the listed stock version of that. You can go back and see the video I put on the last day of the year. I went over this in detail but this was it. This was the setup. And at 904 and that was the breakout level the thing I could have done better is that I could have held better because my sell was the next minute at 937 still a nice percent game but um, you know this thing went to freaking 12 um, yeah and that was at right here 10 12 937 so 
right here was my sell right here was my buy thing went to 12 what I could have done better was that I could have done a trend line basically from the first green candle that started the uptrend and I go over it in the video again made that day. It was super nice how this one followed it so well. Here's the cell. Uh, not the cell, the other end. Um, you can see how it, you know, this would have allowed me to sell at the 980s because it broke the trend line at that point in the 980s. And even though it held itself, it ended up being like some kind of a, maybe like a baby bull flag right here, this price action. I guess I'll zoom in a bit more. Um, a bit of a bull flag again my entry here right about here and then my sell at right here um, I could have followed the trend line more and that would have helped me sell right here at 991 let's just see what that would have been like out of curiosity again a very small position here five dollar risk level in theory yeah that would have been almost a 10 percent gain which is what I'm really trying to get and that was the idea there this one um, didn't just downtrend it held uh, it did break the trend line and then it ended up being here like again a, a bull flag and then it made a move towards the upside it went to 12 and I like how it followed the underside of the trend line it wasn't um, necessarily you know doing it the same way or at least the way I had it I might have drawn this trend line a little differently from the way I had it back then because um, what I um, had it back then um, this trend line was on this side of this move right here but it made distance from um, the trend line and this time it actually made a big red candle towards the downside but this was a pretty predictable setup if you ask me um, something I could have traded with a lot more money maybe 2022 with um, you know more experience again three things I want to get better and that I want my um, you know average trade size to be larger I think I can scale up at this point um, it's going to be scary, but I got to do it. I got to scale up. I want my average winning trade to be much bigger than my average losing trade. And I want more, um, you know, percent gains that are above 3%, 5%, 10%. I can totally do those things. I have a lot of things I need to keep getting better at. It's a long journey, but I'm very thankful for God for it. And yeah, this concludes the video. Um, that's really all I have. If you have any questions, you can ask, um, you know, leave a comment below and I'll try to get back to you. A lot of room for improvement, a lot of things I can do better. I'm overall happy and um, ideally things can keep going, you know, towards the upside after all this experience and training here again, a gift from God. I just have to keep going and uh, yeah, I don't want to drag this on. That's all I have for this video. It was a pretty good 2021.